also with higher time periods. Now, I will get into multiple time period evaluation later on in the series. The only point I'm trying to make here is you never want to judge or evaluate your volume or activity analysis based on a single chunk or distance in the market. What do I mean by distance? I'm talking purely about the number of sessions. If you're comparing your volume to just one or two trading sessions, which is about all we can fit onto the screen here with the five minute chart, you're really not getting a full picture of what may be high or low volume. What may look like high volume on this chart here and here may in all actuality on a much higher time frame like a 60 minute bar turn into areas of the chart which were relatively speaking low volume areas. Now this won't always be true but always verify. Ronald Reagan was quoted to have said, trust but verify. And the same thing should apply with your trading. Trust that you see high volume but verify it with an additional time frame or by looking at more data on your chart. Now, let's get back to low volume. Remember that's where we started? Well, the reason why low volume is important is specifically for what I call retests. Now, I know retests imply that there was an initial test to begin with, and let me explain what I mean. When we're considering a breakout area in the market, what we're really saying is that price hasn't been able to break up through resistance or down through support. Now let's talk a little bit about this in terms of order flow. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. Now, in looking at how orders actually get into the market and executed, we'll be able to effectively evaluate and logically deduce how support and resistance comes into being. Now, first of all, in an earlier example, I said that a market maker might be looking at a series of orders coming into the market at higher prices. That means that this market maker, or in our case, dealer, is going to need to buy as much as he can at lower prices, if nothing else, to ensure that he doesn't lose money once prices start to run further to the upside. The same type of effect happens when orders flood the market for one reason or the other. Now, in the earlier examples, I was talking about primarily professional money and the market maker. Now, it's not to say that the retail investor like you or I, or even large economic announcements or institutions are not going to have an effect on the market. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that the professional money is going to be able to manipulate the market based on what they know about how market makers work, or in our case dealers, and also how you work as a retail trader. Now, we were talking about order flow. Now let's take a look at how support and resistance comes into play. Now in this case, remember we have a gap of orders here between 8870 and 8860. There simply aren't any orders there, so the dealer has a wide gap in his price. Now, as the market is trading, if a series of sell orders come into play as the market ticks up here to 88.80, then the market maker or dealer is forced with one of two options. Either the market maker can match those orders up with buy orders from other customers, or as the market maker sees these orders coming into the marketplace here, he can simply decide to mark price down. 